What's going on, everybody? Jeff Holiday here, and uh, I'm here at the desk because, man, I I am I am doing some research, some discovery. Uh, you see, a while back, I made a video on the dangers of something called Bloodrood, and not only did I make a video on it, I also went on the League of Nerds and talked about it. And Miles Power, the amazing Miles Power, also made a video about Bloodrood. And for those who aren't really necessarily caught up. You should probably check out some of those videos. They're really, really interesting. Some are really hard to watch. And honestly, this is going to be a little hard to watch too. Just fair warning. Some of the stuff, some of the pictures are pretty gross. But we're going to do a quick catch up on what's been happening in the magical world of Bloodrood. You see, despite having been pretty outspoken and uh, a little notorious for having exposed some Bloodroot stuff, I, for some reason, am not banned from the Bloodroot Salve discussion group on Facebook yet. And this is like the main hub of where all this kind of activity goes on, where these uh, <laughs> interesting, interesting people decide to uh, share their basic stories and their pictures of all the ways that they've, bas they've been mutilating themselves with this all-natural compound that eats away at your flesh. And I thought that it would be kind of interesting to look at three newer cases of what's going on so you can kind of understand, one, how dangerous this is, two, how it feeds into what I would honestly believe is kind of a, a psychologically unsafe set of practices, a kind of group delusion where people are mutilating themselves, as well as some of the dangerous attitudes and practices behind it. So let's start off with one that's a little kooky, but for the most part, it kind of follows the whole pattern of how people who are taking blood root and using it religiously, uh, how, how, how far they can push things. Now up on here, we're going to be seeing a couple of different pictures of a person who has been repeatedly solving the same spot on their leg over and over and over. And so this first picture taken on November 30th is round 25, 25 applications on the same spot. And as you can see, it's, oh, oh my God, it's such a gnarly picture. But this person has been repeatedly solving the same spot over and over again. And the reason why this person has done this is because they firmly believe that if the black salve reacts in any way, it means that there's a cancer there, a tumor that needs to be burned out. Not really understanding that putting it on healthy skin also eats away at it. They have completely convinced themselves to now having a giant fucking crater on the back of their calf. Something else that's kind of interesting too is there's this following conversation where right underneath the latest picture showing this giant raw open hole, somebody says, oh, I see, I see you're giving it a rest. Well, I have the flu. So the basic idea behind this is that the only reason they're not going to try and resolve and dig a deeper hole, oh, it's just because I have the flu. But just you wait, as soon as I'm healthy again. Oh, fuck. But hey, if you think that's interesting, just get ready to be pissed off. You see, it's one thing when somebody decides to do this to themselves, but what about when they do it to their dog? After nine years of working to get rid of these tumors on my dog using homeopathic remedies, homeopathic remedies, I went this route because they told me my dog probably would not make it through the surgery as he has a melanoma in the roof of his mouth and he could bleed to death. That was enough for me to try and help him any other way I could. We've been battling masses on him for no, over nine years. They come and go, they get bigger and smaller, and now this thing on his back has erupted out. This is the state of the largest one, a spindle cell carcinoma on his back. He is about 60 pounds at this time and 13 years of age. He has been on Artemix, with additional of artemisinin, artemisinin, CBD oil and capsules and CBD treats. CBD, by the way, is weed, marijuana and the homeopathic detoxing and cancer remedies from Homeo Animal. He was on a raw diet of turkey and veggies for years, and he just all of a sudden decided he wasn't eating raw anymore. So I cook boneless chicken thighs and veggies for him, and add whatever we are having from our meal. That is healthy to get him to eat. He is on tons of supplements to boost his immune system and replenish his vitamins and minerals, which I concoct into a green drink for him and feed it to him with a turkey baster twice a day. Let that sink in for a minute. This person has been pumping their dog full of all these homeopathic remedies, marijuana, and then twice a day this person mixes up a, a green smoothie and then holds the dog down and turkey base it into his mouth. Let's continue. 
The homeo stuff worked at first, then just seemed to stop, so I've been trying for about 5 weeks the Artemix regimens, which has been having the tumor come out of the skin, as you can see. But I started to get uneasy as the largest mass, pictured, has had a second smaller quarter sized knot appear at the base and back of this large one. I was hoping to sneak in the bloodroot capsules, but I'm not sure if I can, or I have to give him a break from the other stuff he's on first. I tried the blood root gentle salve on a tiny spot on the large tumor yesterday and not much happened except to turn black the eraser sized knot then today i tried to use the blood root salve on the same spot and he started crying out even with him having in his system several pain type things so she put this burning escharotic topical treatment onto a dog's raw tumor and even with it being on pain medications it started crying you mad yet I am. I had to take it off in less than a minute and put on the soothing salve. It was just too much. Any ideas on the use of the blood root capsules or any experience out there with using them with other stuff in their systems or your experiences? In the pictures, that is a soup spoon I laid next to the tumor, and it is stained yellow from using turmeric golden paste on it. It is not cleansed before the pictures, just unwrapped. And the very top comment is, of course, from Ruth Driver, the person who is the driving force, haha, if you will, behind the blood root craze on this group and owns Zenith Herbal. And she says, I would use blood root paste, not salve. You can make it using a powder from a few capsules. It's mild and non escharotic, which is not true. If it has blood root in it, it is escharotic. The woman replies, what is the formula to make the blood root paste you're referring to from the capsules? And of course, Ruth is very helpful to uh, send a link to her website. I hope your dog gets better. You must really love him to go through all you do to help him. You are amazing. I love dogs and I have five. Yeah, she must really love her dog to be pumping it full of a bunch of bullshit and then putting a burning, flesh-eating fucking paste onto its back. Hmm, yeah, a lot of love there. You love your dog. I thought my dog was the most cared for animal in the world. I now realize how wrong I was. Hope he heals soon. If nothing else, and at least you can assure yourself that you literally did everything humanly possible for this lucky dog. I think you're awesome. Oh, and here we have another person uh, trying to show the picture of their dog. This is what happened to my fur baby about three days after I put blood root paste on her spindle cell soft tissue sarcoma. The tumor started to dissolve, and it was coming out like a jelly-like substance and a lot of blood. Now it's kind of brown in the center, and you can see the dead cancer cells, I guess. Obviously, this person is an animal oncologist, so we can trust what they're saying. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, and this one person tries to be helpful and says, Oh, by the way, you should inject watered-down salve into each of the tumors. Yeah, that's a good idea. But this last one I want to share is basically a showcasing of massive delusion. And also, I'm not really sure. I can't say with absolute certainty that this person is on the level. Because, you know, when you're when you're dealing with things like Facebook, you can only go off of basically what people are willing to tell you. So somebody could lie and say that they've been to a doctor and they have this diagnosis or that diagnosis. I mean, it's entirely possible that somebody is just completely full of shit. So I'm going to I'm going to basically show this as much as I can. And we'll I'll talk about it a little bit, but you have to be a little skeptical because having experience with people who have gone through severe cancers every cancer reacts differently and every person handles cancer differently some actually do look fairly healthy all the way up until the point that they die it's rare but it can happen but for now so let's check out this story from a woman who is in her 40s folks who read my other posts and seen my album and face back you know that i treat in incredibly large quantities and mass areas at a time If you don't have support and you are new to this, don't treat big areas or multi-areas. Well, after a whirlwind couple weeks, what's happened? Had an explosion of tumors spread through my body. The last few weeks treatment taking a long time to heal. I'm at 155 tumors in two months. New application went on today. So another 40 plus grams at one time on my legs, chest, face, upper tummy, and lymph nodes on right slash left side of my body. Don't ask incredible pain. Started an eight-week liver, colon, and intensive cancer treatment at my new temporary residence back in... Praise the Lord. So grateful to be back in organic, holistic country. On Friday, my hair gets removed completely, and we start the skull in its entirety and top half of back. So that's my update. And as you can see, of course, as uh, is customary in the Bloodroot group, you have Rock On Girl 
This is so impressive. You really rock. We've learned a lot from you just reading your posts. Thank you. Oh my god, you are a brave woman and you deserve to succeed. Love and healing to you. Wow, why is the cancer spreading? You are a real warrior. It's another journey with cancer for me. Cervical, breast, skin melanoma, and nasopharyngeal adenoid cystic carcinoma. So a bunch of new and secondary, I guess, is a simplified way of explaining terminal diagnosis that started racing through my body in July. Now September and things are starting to change in certain areas. If you don't mind me asking, what was your official diagnosis? Stage 4 slash 5 melanoma includes limps, secondary breast, already had both removed at 37, now 42, and the unexpected surprise of nasopharyngeal adenoid cystic carcinoma affecting nose slash cheek, behind left eye, behind left ear, and parts of lower skull. Basically, it was riddled through my body, almost to brain and bone, but not now. The mother tumor from nasopharyngeal adenoid cystic carcinoma has all but been destroyed by five times treat face, nose, under eyes, forehead, cheekbones, you name it, behind ears, flarkin hurt bad, but so worth it to be where I'm at today. Let's take another look at this person. Here's some more successful releases. So folks, since my big application two works ago, we were at 150 or so tumors. Now we are at 232. I have all but cleared the right leg. Yippee! Remember Doc said dead by Xmas? Now they be like, what are you doing? Shrug their shoulders. I'm like, yeah! All my tumors once out and as scab starts are covered in dragon's blood three times a day. And I of course take a lot of stuff internally, including turmeric tinctures with a number of other things. But touch wood, folks hoping to overturn a terminal diagnosis in three more weeks. So that be three months of plant medicine and salving. Fingers crossed. Most of these pictures are tumors from my left leg and chest wall, stuff on face is dragon's blood, and I treated face, nose, forehead five times now, and believe I have seriously assaulted, ha ha ha, the mother tumor, cause we can't find any trace of it in last scan. Fingers crossed again. Five more weeks and I know for sure. Now why exactly am I looking specifically at this person? Well, the reason behind it is kind of simple. If there's one tried and true method of ferreting out whether or not somebody's on the level, is if they're asking for money. And, uh, fighting cancer with plant medicine. $2,185 of the $15,000 goal. Hi everyone, please can you help me help myself? This campaign is for myself. Blah, 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 is what my friends call me. I'm a 42 spiritual woman, light worker, empath, single mother of three grown children who has spent my life helping others help themselves with natural plant medicine and natural therapies of many modalities, including also Western medical training. So this person trains people in Western medicine? I don't think so. It turns out I am now dealing with cancer again. Yes, again. Third time. I have had bilateral hysterectomy, all ovaries gone, had a bilateral mastectomy, yes, both breasts, and now nasal and skin cancer. Whoa, I tell you what a journey. I'm calling it Cancer's Love, also a book I'm going to write. A journey of healing, empowerment, and a test of faith, endurance, love, giving, and receiving the most. Yes, the most pain I've endured in my life emotionally, physically, and spiritually, a test of my faith. OMG, you cannot imagine at times, and yes, I've thought about quitting, truly at times have been like, God, creator, just take me now. However, that appears not to be the plan. Thank God for unanswered prayers. I've been blessed with love and support from with medicine, all natural plant medicine, unlimited support, and now three months into my journey, accommodation while healing and so much more. My heartfelt gratitude to them is priceless. I've met some amazing people and had the blessing of right people turning up when I had lost hope only to be given more hope, more faith, and more healing. With this help, I've removed over 200 tumors from various parts of my body. I've tried many therapies, from Reiki to Theta to urine therapy. Urine therapy. Meditation, raw food diet, fasting, and I'm making progress slowly and sometimes excruciatingly painful. However, all worth it, every bit. My kidneys and bowel working again now, my weight balancing out, my lymphatics working much better, and so much more. Apparently, her... Bowels were not working at some point? Don't know. In my third month, I am so grateful to all who donate and support me in various ways. Medical bills, healing, fundraising, medicine, and hope to name a few. For those who don't just look at you like another face of cancer, so grateful for that. You can join me on Facebook and follow it if you like. But today I need your help. I need to raise money to help pay for my plant medicine and natural ways and my very low maintenance life until I can return to work, i.e. bills, food, board, etc., medical tests, medicine, and so forth. 
I have been treating myself since July of 2016, and now it's November. I removed my body many tumors doing what I've been doing. I have seen general practitioners in Emerald and now blah, blah, blah. Head scan, seen specialist, and now instead of surgery, chemo, radiation, I choose natural therapy with no regrets, nothing but empowerment and faith, hope, and a knowing all will be well, and this too shall pass. A GP actually even refused to acknowledge natural medicine and walked me out of his surgery in this day and age. I was mortified by such behavior. Given for over 20 years, I myself have treated clients with both natural and western medical practices. Please, if you can help me, I'd be eternally grateful. You are happy to share my methods and case studies with you. And of course, you can follow my journey on Facebook and here and message me anytime through Messenger if I can help you help someone else with my story. Much love and light. And again, blurring out, you know, any real identifiable features. Let's take a look at, uh, you know, what she's been doing to her face this entire time. Oh, good. Okay. Now, this is going to sound a little harsh, and I hope you'll bear with me on this. As far as this goes, this person, when I look at just their basic profile picture, recently updated as far as, uh, that would be three days ago. They obviously have patches of healing skin where they decided to put a burning compound on. But whether or not this person has actually had all these procedures and actually has had clinical diagnoses by an actual doctor and not a naturopath, it's hard to say. Now, I will absolutely, without any hesitation, tell you that there are naturopath doctors out there, these wingnut motherfuckers that never went to medical school, who will take a look at you and tell you that you're dying just so that they can sell you something or so that they can scare you into trying to do some radical fucking treatment. This happens a lot. And so this person uh, lives in New South Wales. There have been numerous, numerous counts now of people uh, cutting their lives extremely short because they chose for a naturopath remedy. So this is a really sad one. Thomas Sam, a lecturer in homeopathy, and his wife Manju, 37 of Sydney, were convicted in June after the death of their nine-month-old daughter Gloria from septicemia and malnutrition in May of 2002. The parents had faced a maximum penalty of 25 years in prison. Johnson said there was a wide chasm between the couple's approach and the action a reasonable parent would have taken. Thomas Sam's arrogant approach to his preference for homeopathy and Manju Sam's difference to her husband led to their daughter's death. Gloria became malnourished by battles against infections that invaded her bloodstream through skin broken by rashes. So these people basically, rather than taking their, their daughter to a hospital to deal with a severe skin disorder, chose homeopathy and alternative medicine, and she died. And that's not the only one. There are numerous cases. Homeopathy, pseudoscience, weird naturopath remedies are, are rife all over Australia, and it, it happens a fucking lot, actually. But back to this person that I don't really want to necessarily name, they're asking for money. But they also claim that they, they teach people how to cure things naturally. And this is feeding into this group delusion, this person willing to pace themselves with massive amounts of this dangerous compound all over their body, and then is seen as an inspiration for other people. And many of these people, this really gets back to the true root of why blood root is so dangerous, is these people are desperate. Many of them are dying. And they choose to try and go this route rather than something else. Now, if you're terminal and you have nothing to lose, Hey, do whatever you want, that's fine. But these people, a lot of times, are also just healthy, and they're convinced into doing this dangerous practice by people who do not know what the fuck they're talking about. And at the head of all of it, at the head of all of it, is this woman, Ruth Driver, who pushes and promotes these alternative cures on her fucking website, Zenith Herbal. And she does not know what she's talking about. She's a snake oil salesman. So, again, blood root, pretty goddamn dangerous. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to, to bring that up again, because honestly, I feel like a lot of these woo-woo pseudoscience things just, I, like, I'll, I'll address them once, and then they just kind of drift off into the background. And I think, honestly, a lot of pressure needs to be maintained. It needs to be put on that people are willingly burning holes in their body because of group delusion. So I might bring it up again. Um, if I find more interesting stories like this, I might share them with you in gross pictures. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I just, I, I think it's kind of the right thing to do. 
Anyway, uh, it's been a little slow on my channel, but I have not been slow. I've been very, very busy. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, I did a video that was released on Mr. Epsion's channel um, all about the hilarious seesaw of society, um, where things are going in the, the, the social dynamic, especially online, um, and with uh, regressive versus authoritarian policies between the right and the left. I did a very fun live stream watching Hidden Colors, the the documentary by Tariq Nasheed, and I got to watch that with uh, Tyler Preston, Patty Politics, and Prince of Dew. Uh, that's over on Tyler Preston's channel. I have a link down below. And over on my second channel, I just recently did some great interviews with some of my patrons, and a few of them I think are really interesting to, to pay attention to. I have my buddy Joe, who's a trucker, who's lived a very interesting life. Uh, I also talked to the Goat Man, who is a man living in the United Arab Emirates, and with an interesting perspective uh, from a Muslim in a much more moderate uh, Muslim country, uh, his opinions on what's going on in the rest of the Muslim world, culturally, between the different gaps and divides. Really interesting stuff, so you should check that out as well. And regularly scheduled content should probably start returning pretty soon. It's just been a really crazy month, crazy month. But I hope you're all well, I'm doing well, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye, guys.